that explains the stuff. Nice to be in the banking industry at the moment. For the last 20 years, this is the moment that I want to quit my job. But it happened that no one wants to take me, so I have to stick with this, the banking industry. So the bank is actually full of the challenges, as you know. The consumer behavior has changed. Everyone has the mobile, perhaps more. Uh, in particular, if the 5G happens, so I would assume there would be more mobiles or more internet connection. Another challenge is these guys unbundling the banking business. Everyone wants to be the bank, but they do not know yet what's going to happen. So the next one is actually the regulation side. So in the banking industry, we have over 5,000 or 7,000 policies that we have to, to follow. To get one project executed, it took me uh, to go to at least 13 committee, 26 signatures to launch it. So yes, talk to me how to launch things in the bank, okay? The other thing is that the banking uh, system called banking is super complex and is still running on the 30 or 40 years old technology. Definitely, we cannot run at your speed. So that would be another big problem of running the bank in this century. And another challenge would be on the uh, revenues or the uh, profit. As you notice, every day there will be more of the regulations, more of the pressure in terms of the fee cutting down, this and that. But in terms of the cost size, every day is the cost will go up. We have IFRS, we have the cyber securities, we have other things. Every two or three years, we have to upgrade the system again. So the cost size is going up. We cannot just eliminate branch by one day. But we have to deal with how we cope with the, the, the uh, shutting down in terms of the fees and revenue. Last but not the least, the most important one is the cyber security one because we do not know where it's going, when it's going to come, which form is going to come. Okay, that the sad story of become a bank working in the banking industry today. Uh, however, to survive, what we have to do is actually two things. Very simple. On the digital transformation, you have to improve the customer experience, and the other one is that to make sure that you improve productivity and efficiency. So everything we do right now to answer two things, improve customer experience and gain productivity and efficiency. And these are the, I wouldn't say it's the um, weakness of the bank, but it is true that we are running something that in efficiency in these four things, payments, money transfer, wealth management, and lending. That's why these people is on this stage. Because we're not running is as efficient as we should be. And these are the new things that's going to happen, uh, is, and it's already happened in the banking industry. One, uh, robot advisor, pretty much like a, 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 the algo trade and electronic trading. But we entering in the stage that whereby the gen young generation say, don't talk to me. If you were the I am just Give me some tools that I can manage my wealth. And in particular, that we are getting to the aging society, this and that, and the wealth of the other generation will be transferred to another generation. So we are facing the technology disruption in terms of the aging in society as well. The second one is the blockchain. So we believe in the distributed uh, DLT and decentralized process. So we are introducing and working seriously on the blockchain because we run the bank and the blockchain banking. And of course AI, the AI will help improve a lot of, uh, we increase productivity and efficiency. And we use the AI in the service pretty much a lot, which is going to help bring down the uh, cost for the bank. The EKYC thing, uh, people talk about the national digital ID, that will be the uh, future infrastructure of the industry that would help disrupt ourselves and actually going to help the onboard the customer in the most convenient way and the least cost for the entire industry. The mobile first, the open API that we should talk about. Last but not the least, the digital lending. One, all of the information can be connected. The platform is ready, the API is ready. I think we will see a disruption in the lending business. And last but not the least, uh, we're mapping it out, the readiness of the digital transformation on the context of Thailand. Uh, we look into the the entire country, so whereby we have almost 90 million um, bank account, 
uh, perhaps around 75% of the population already have the bank account. We have a debit card around 51 million debit card, the credit card 21 million credit cards, and pop pay register over 40 million. The e-money account around 40 million register. The mobile banking is 32 million. And again, I read it. This is going to create the disruption of critical mass because five years ago, the mobile banking user is only 1.5 million. And it's growing on the speed of 3 to 4 percent per month. So it's going to hit 40 million soon. That's going to create the mass, uh, critical mass. And the internet ranking, another 20, but stable. Uh, mobile subscriber is only more than more, uh, 91 million, smartphone 52, and we call it uh, the internet infrastructure rated and which is 50% only. So meaning that the Wi-Fi connection is not that widespread. The cost of the airtime is still high, but I believe that when we go to 5G, the infrastructure will be much cheaper, airtime will be lower. Social media user is more than 50 million. Thai people is crazy on this one. We have EDC, which is the electronic payment 400,000. But last not but last but not the least, the QR. But based on the Bank of Thailand government, they already said that the number of the QR deployed is over a one million already. So this in nutshell, that's somewhat Thailand is actually ready for the digital disruptions and also the digital readiness will be somewhat in the stage that you're going to see a change drastic change in the next three to five years. Okay. Right. People yes. talk a lot about the peer-to-peer -peer lending or digital lending, but I uh, would like to echo this one. Because we're also running the largest uh, personal loan credit card in Thailand, and also the chairman of the credit card clubs as well, so I have to be political colleague on this one. Lending is not easy. Lending money to other persons, everyone can lend but not everyone can get the money back. So we have to be cautious on this one, on why we should gradually improve how we lending to the people. But there will be someone that who do not know or do not have the cautious enough to, to get the loans or to manage the money. Or be, uh, I would say they have the financial education. Sometimes you can over lend. However, yes, there will be some sort of the, uh, what do you call it? as some part of the industry is not efficient, as our colleagues are saying that. We're not having the good platforms or the way that we can actually lend to the right people at the right price. So right now, there's a lot of things that's still going on on this one, but soon, I think we will have the efficient, um, platforms and technology that will be able to improve the financial inclusion in all aspects of the customer. The, the algorithm is one thing, the accuracy of the algorithm will, will help. But in my past experience, once you lend the people, the loss is not actually occur right away because the peak loss will happen around 36 to 48 months down the road. Meaning that when you give the money out today, you do not know because the last peak is actually later on. But the algorithm is based on the historical experience. But yes, the technology will help in terms of you know where they go, what the mobile number that they call, whether or not the email they read, they have a lot of missed calls. So there's other things that can help us improve in terms of how we can lend to the people at the right time. Yes, sure. A couple of days, the Grab just announced that, that we launched the Grab page and Grab financial. And because they only partner with the Great Saison, which is the Japanese uh, firm on this one. So, we see the trend. When the platform has scale enough, has the huge customer base, and the models is fit with the market, then it's beyond imagination and creativity. You can connect with finance, you can connect with order, so it's dependent on the platform. Back to the like, right page, sooner or later, they will be able to activate not just the financial, it could be insurance, it could be wealth management, it could be an other thing, it's just beyond uh, your creativity. It's just how you're going to use your customer base, your information on data that you have, and then open your app. Okay. What will the role of a bank be? Not as 
necessarily from seeing in this platform that is led by non-banks or non-financial institutions? Again, like you mentioned, running the bank is not that easy. In, in particular, in the industry or country whereby it's super or highly regulated. In Thailand, it's actually highly regulated industry and country. So by partnering, it's actually a good collaboration. Once we already have a license, we already gone through all these protocols, but that's what we do not have. We do not have a good technology. We do not have a good uh, a platform. But perhaps the collaboration with the legacy like us would help lift walkings or, or brings the innovations or product or project that you want to launch in the market quicker, much easier on this one. So I think it's, it's better that to uh, thinking about how we can collaborate with partners. On the other aspect, if your platform is good, the bank will invest in your platform. Very good. One more question. Yeah. Uh, happy, uh, so, uh, you know, banks have had you know, the What will make us more, collaborate more? Aside from investing, uh, on that, of course. But, uh, if you recall, that when, when we decide the uh, digital transformation strategy, it's, we create the three prompts. One is that the current, the current stage, which we call is the improved stage, by using the fintech or the technology to improve efficiency at the current business models. The second stage is just to reform or using the technology to come up with a new process. For example, Ripple, international money transfer. The third one is the disruptive stage, which is blockchains, open banking, intelligent banking, or other things. So these are the welcoming stage that we can embrace the technology from the fintech to work with the bank. Because we know that in every stage or in every day, we have to move one step further. And without the technology, without the involvement of the fintech, we cannot walk or run fast enough. It's better than to collaborate with the fintech to help us leapfrog in the innovation. Sure.